Hey Jules Plus Vegan and as always welcome to my channel and for those of you who are new I know you can benefit. So I'm going to be talking about Seaspiracy which is the most recent Netflix documentary on the plight of our oceans but before I do I just wanted to say that I have been doing the Stations of the Cross which was from when Jesus was condemned to death all the way to his body being laid in the tomb and I was on station number 10 today, but I do not want to continue to compare to Christ for 10 through 14. I believe those are uniquely his. So I'm going to attach my Jules Plus Vegan video on the Stations of the Cross, which I did last year on Good Friday, and this coming Friday is Good Friday. Um, so I would encourage you to watch that to learn a little bit more. Um, so I just wanted to go through station 10 was when they just added insult to injury by stripping him of his clothes. Station 11 is actually nailing him to the cross. Uh, so horrific. If you're not familiar, you can look that up. But if you've seen Passion of the Christ, it's all too real. Um, station 12 is Jesus actually dying on the cross. God bless him a thousand times. Station 13 is taking him down from the cross and Thank you so much to Joseph of Arimathea for lending Jesus his tomb uh, to be buried in. And finally, um, station 14 is lying him in the tomb. And for those who believe in a station 15, it is certainly the resurrection. But anyway, I encourage you to watch that video if you'd like to learn more. All right, so I want to talk about Seaspiracy a really powerful documentary on Netflix. And if you don't have Netflix, you know, it might be worth getting one month's worth. They have a ton of really important documentaries on there. Um, things like What the Health, if you haven't seen it, about uh, the manipulation of the medical industry or Forks Over Knives and the importance of using a fork, which is generally a salad versus a knife, which is like cutting a dead carcass, right? Um, there's so many. Kiss the Ground, I think, is one by Woody Harrelson. And certainly this newest one, Seaspiracy. So you know what? For a month, you might want to and just go for broke, especially if you're trying to get a conviction and understand why it's imperative that we no longer eat meat. Okay, so this is an article, which again, I will include in the description of the video as well, called Five Shocking Takeaways from the Netflix Documentary, Seaspiracy. And I certainly have more than that, but it's late and um, I'm just gonna follow this and add some of my thoughts with it. So it says, if you had a chance to watch the recent Netflix, Netflix documentary, Seaspiracy, produced by Kip Anderson of Cowspiracy fame. Um, Brit director Ali Tabritzi stars in the 89 minutes, so not very long, feature about the plight of the world oceans. And that's like understatement of the year. It's a spoiler alert. The oceans are basically beep. They didn't discuss, but I get their point. Many of the things explored in Seaspiracy are similar to those that were discussed in June of 2019 when the surf community especially some of the ocean advocacy groups, had a war on plastic and the fishing front was eerily quiet. I so get that. So it says it more or less still is, meaning the fishing front. In brief, plastic is really bad, but at least half of ocean plastic comes from fishing, in case you did not know that. Oh my gosh. So it also removes the fish being caught, sold, and eaten from the sea, alongside some 30 million tons of others in the process. Because of the methods that they use, one of the things they show on there is called trawling. And it is like literally, I, I don't even know, and I think they show a visual. What I appreciated about this a lot was not only, of course, was it full of facts, visuals like charts and different things like that uh, when they had to be graphic especially involving humans they did almost like a cartoon illustration instead of the actual so i appreciated all of that but i can't remember how big the nets were for trawling i think they were literally the length of the empire state building or certainly the statue of liberty but these massive nets literally just scraped at the bottom of the ocean floor to the point of removing all flora, fauna, um, you know, everything, just absolutely stripping it barren 
for miles and miles and miles. I mean, like, how can the ocean ever catch up? It was pure insanity to see these gigantic nets that they call trawling. I mean, wiping out coral farms. I mean, it just on and on, just wow. Like, it kind of reminded me of when um, people, obviously, when people use a rifle to shoot an animal, the animal has no chance. But when they use a rifle to shoot a fish or to shoot a alligator, like, really? How do you outrun a bullet? Um, but anyway... The trawling idea just flipped me out, seriously. So 30 million tons of other fish, not even the ones they intended, in the process. Very few in the environmental advocacy space seem particularly keen on talking about fishing, which seems odd. Fishing also contributes massively to climate collapse and has more than a dabble in the modern human slavery. And they ain't playing. It turns out they use a bunch of people against their will. To get fish for us? Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, I could just cry on how many times I had like a fillet of fish at McDonald's or an amazing piece of, you know, mahi tuna at a fancy restaurant in Malibu or, you know, perfect salmon at, what is his name? Wolfgang Pucks in Beverly Hills. I mean, like it's so fancy, right? At least it's not a uh, chicken. At least it's not, you know, steak. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I could just, I can't believe it. They said over 24,500 fishers, fishermen, fisherwomen, fisher people, fisher slaves uh, die every year in the fishing industry. I grew up in a city of 26,500. 24,500 die every year? Who knew? And And then they said that they provide what are called observers who go out on these ships to make sure that they're actually doing what they proclaim in terms of safe catching and la la la. And that 19 of them went missing accidentally went overboard or died. <sighs> so corrupt, I could just cry. Okay, so you may have remembered the Deep Water Horizon, which was in the Gulf of Mexico, a gigantic um, oil spill a couple years back. And um, certainly the Exxon Valdez, don't even get me started, from 1988. You may not have been born, but anyway. It says, a deep horizon, deep water horizon benefited marine wildlife by pausing fishing. Kind of reminds me of the COVID. You know, for one second in our fear and our need to isolate, it only took two months to watch the world bloom Animals were showing up in places they hadn't been in forever. We were able to see mountains that had been, you know, clouded by smog. I mean, like the world started to renew in just two months. And then people got bored and tired. And of course, it's all back. But anyway, it says you're probably well aware of the 2010 explosion of B at BP, Deep Water Horizon, oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico, killing 11 workers and sending 206 million gallons of oil into the Gulf of Mexico over the next three months. Labeled as one of the worst environmental disasters in U.S. history, it spewed 11 times as much oil as the 1988 Exxon Valdez disaster in Alaska. Yet, what we learn in Seaspiracy is that while oil spills such as this are tragic, disastrous and should be avoided at all cost, they actually aren't as bad for the marine wildlife as the status quo, which is commercial fishing, right? Professor Colin Rolverts explains that the fishing industry in the Gulf of Mexico actually destroys more marine life per day than the spill did over a period of months. Deepwater Horizon was beneficial to marine wildlife because fishing was banned due to fears of oil contamination. It got a respite from fishing. I so get it. I so get it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here's the thing. Fishing gear, meaning the nets and all the things to do with fishing, equal 50% of ocean plastic. We're talking about straws in restaurants. In California, you can't just get a straw. You have to ask for it. We're talking about the fear of too many straws and fishing gear, these gigantic nets trapping and killing animals intentionally and not. 
meaning the floating debris is accidentally killing additional animals. Uh, so plastic straws, as tragic as those may be, and I'm sure we've all seen the image of one up the nose of a, you know, turtle or whatever, is one third of a percent. One third of a percent, so 0 0.03. One third of a percent of all the plastic is from straws. But it is a major emergency, right? It certainly is here. So 70% of macroplastic, meaning the large items at sea, come from fishing gear. Roughly 50% of the infamous ocean garbage patches, and I don't know if you're familiar, look them up if you're not, like the Pacific, it's called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And it's literally three times the size of Texas. It may be even bigger now, but it's just this swirling, gigantic. Texas is, you know, is it the largest? I think it's the second largest. I think Alaska, Texas, and then California. So I think it's the largest uh, state in the United States, but three times the size of Texas, just swirling in that ocean, a gigantic garbage patch, okay? Um, but they're made up of fishing gear. Meanwhile, plastic straws make up about one third of a percent, and yet weirdly are the much bigger subject of influencers' focus. You know, it reminds me of a magic trick, right? They get you to be looking over here while they do a sleight of hand over here and trick you, and that's what's going on. Plastic straw is such a problem. Killing, 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 destroying, destroying. But look at the plastic straws, you know? Don't look at the man behind the curtain. Like, what? I was as tricked as anybody. Admittedly, it is quite hard to take a pic of yourself looking hot while not eating a fish and getting paid for it. But the broader point is that the plastic packaging and utensils are bad, but never usually anywhere near as bad for the natural world as the food that they're being used to consume. Despite all the publicity surrounding the straws, cup, and cutlery. So yeah, as bad as that plastic fork is, there's a dead carcass on the end of it. Might we talk about that? Oh my goodness, right you guys? So it says the slaughter of Taji, Japan is mainly done at the behest of the bluefin tuna industry. And I can't remember all the stats on that, but they literally talked about what looked like a rather ordinary tuna to me being worth a million dollars. And that it's actually a status thing that you can just be even more amazing if you're eating that tuna, you know? And and I get it, because I just told you. I was hanging out at Wolfgang Pucks in Beverly Hills. I was hanging out at, you know, amazing places in Malibu and, and dressing to the nines to eat my fish, you know? I still get it. All right, according to Seaspiracy, um... Oh, it says, you might have heard of Taji perhaps from the 2009 documentary, The Cove. You might remember David Rost Dave Rostovich leading a paddle out protest in 2007 in his group. They're called Surfers for Cestations. But did you really know what the killing was all about? According to Seaspiracy, local fishermen, protected by police and a wall of silence from authorities, drive cestations into the cove, capture some dolphins to sell into the global marine recreation park trade, meaning, you know, SeaWorld and stuff like that, marine land, right? So they take all these dolphins and they sell some of them to those recreation park trade at about 100 grand per animal, $100,000 per animal. And the rest are butchered. Not for their meat, generally, as it's too high mercury for human consumption, can you believe? But because the bluefin tuna fishery located nearby sees them as the reason it catches are plummeting. So they would rather kill and slaughter all of those dolphins, the ones that they don't sell to recreation parks for $100,000, because they feel like they pose a threat through their precious little bluefish industry. It's like, what? Oh my gosh, it's just so scary. It is so scary. <sighs> okay. What's really scary to me about this though, the most, 
is that when I talk about it to people who aren't vegan and have no sense that they could ever be vegan and don't understand why anyone is vegan, is that they don't understand that these problems don't have to exist at all, right? The CO2 emissions from all of the excrement from our cows, right? The excessive poo-poos and things that are produced um, doesn't have to exist if we're not over producing cows for our thrill of eating, uh, again, with so much waste, it's insane. Um, the problem in this industry of 25,000 people dying and 19 observers going missing and a bunch of slaughtering of these beautiful, intelligent dolphins uh, to protect supposed bluefish and everything else would not have to happen at all if people didn't consume fish. Like, these problems are all about meat consumption and our right to do it, despite all the waste. And man, this movie really points out the insanity of the waste. So this next thing is called bycatch. And it says the bycatch is responsible for 40% of the removal of marine wildlife from our seas because of bycatch, if you're not familiar. It says, you might've wondered why so many dolphins watch up dead on Europe's beaches every year. We did too. And we interviewed Sea Shepherd's captain, Thomas Lacaz, last year for our podcast. According to Sea Spiracy, 10,000 dolphins are killed per year as bycatch on the west coast of France alone. Something that's been going on since the 1950s and kept quiet by the French. The film claims that around 300,000 dolphins, whales, and porpoises are killed globally per year by the fishing industry. And that's just the charismatic, I'm not saying that word right, I don't think, but seditions, seditions, which are our cousins, I guess that's what it's called. It's C-E-T-A-C-E-N-S, cetaceans. I mean, I'm thinking like crustaceans, but those are lobsters and things, cetaceans. Anyway, so bycatch among fish species is estimated around 40% of the total global catch or 30 million tons. And bycatch means their intention is to catch this fish but they accidentally catch all these others and they let them go. They kill them all. They just kill them all and just pick the ones they wanted. Oh, okay. So why do we want sharks? Like, yeah, they talk about sharks and why do we want sharks anyway? This is another prestige thing where it's supposed to be like, let's see what it says. Shark attacks on humans. Okay. <laughs> shark attacks on humans are so rare. Um, compared to how many sharks we actually kill. Um, so shark attack on humans, surfers in particular, hi. They're often wearing a black wetsuit. They look like a seal. The shark thinks it's getting a seal. It ends up being a human. Tend to spark fierce debates. What isn't really in dispute are the global stats as outlined in Seaspiracy. Check this out. About 10 humans are killed by sharks globally. So like in the whole world, 10 are killed per year. Whereas 30,000 sharks are killed per hour, per hour, people. 30,000 sharks are killed per hour. 24 times three is 72 and 72. So the 720,000 sharks every 24 hours. Don't even get me started. Ugh. But why do we actually need or want sharks anyway? It is simply because they're beautiful creatures, as some people may claim. Maybe. But Seaspiracy spells out a more compelling argument as to how exactly a marine ecosystem functions. When you kill off the top layer, which is the sharks, by fishing, the next layer down becomes overpopulated briefly. And then they eat all the next layer down before dying off themselves and so on. So like every other level of the food chain is, is becoming exponentially too impacted, then far too reduced. The pattern repeats in what is often referred to as a cascading ecological collapse. Essentially, you need apex predators to maintain life all the way down the food chain. The film covers a range of topics, including dolphin-friendly labeling, 
that's where those um, observers come in. They're supposed to make sure they're being dolphin, dolphin friendly. It's a total lie. People are just paying for the label. Um, spur is sustainable fishing claims. Again, a total lie. Oh, then I have to admit this is pretty disgusting. But when they show uh, like farming, especially for our precious salmon, which are so intelligent. Salmon are so intelligent. They're amazing how they can swim up stream and and how they just love to be free. And here they are stuck in farms wondering what in the world they're, you know, swimming around in their own excrement, which is so horrific. And then they get attacked by, um, oh God, what is that called? Lice, actually. It's lice. And it's eating them alive. And you're going to see these salmon swimming around with their skin missing because they're being eaten alive in their own excrement. And then people are consuming them, right? Because they can actually purchase what color they want the meat to be in false diet and make it look like it's all healthy and lovely. We're in trouble, people. We are in trouble. <laughs> okay, so in the middle of this is actually the trailer. So if you can't, uh, you know, actually see it, it's still worth the trailer. But if you're a person who's still consuming fish, might you choose not to? Again, for your own health. But for the fish, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Like, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I don't even know. It's really difficult because I get it. Fish was the last thing I let go of. I love tuna. I mean, growing up, my gosh, tuna fish sandwiches, hello. Um, in fact, I never even liked meat as a kid unless it was something like maybe at best a McDonald's filet of fish. And that was mostly because the tartar sauce was sweet and I'm a junkie and there was cheese on it. But it was later when people kept convincing me that it was really healthy that I found a couple that I could tolerate. I didn't really prefer it, but I got to the point where when someone said I shouldn't have it anymore, I was like, yeah, that's a no. I can't stop eating it. Um, but I felt that way about cheese, which I let go of. I felt that way about ice cream, like a lot of things, which praise God, I've let go of. And we have to let go of fish. I mean, we're in huge trouble. I had no idea. I mean, I was thinking, of course, about what's going on on land and the CO2s and all of that. But when this explains the detriment, human slavery for fish, 25,000 people dying a year on those boats, you should see there's these people in a little canoe and they're coming out to one of those huge boats. They have no business out there and they're saying food, food like hi, because again, industry has robbed the locals of what would have just been a natural amount of fishing, only the amount they need. Right. Anyway, it's worth seeing you guys, but it's devastating too. Again, if you can't give it up all the way, might you not only celebrate the amazing meal that you dare to eat, but eat it far less often, please. All right, my friends, like if you like to join us, if you haven't, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Have you seen Seaspiracy? Do you have the courage to eat less fish or none at all? And until we talk again, best of all, we're still here. There's still hope. And therefore, know that you are blessed.